Hey everybody, I just want to come back and do a quick video to follow up from class today. We were discussing proxy ARP earlier and there was a little bit of debate on how exactly it worked. So I think I got the point across, just wanted to go over uh, one quick example of how it works and then a follow up of some of the implement implications that could come forth if you do have proxy ARP enabled on a router, depending on how you set up your static routing. So this is um, gonna be pretty useful, I hope. Uh, a, for just understanding proxy ARP, B for understanding static routes. But you think that's something that you know, but let's just go ahead and, and take a look and make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, let's begin with just understanding proxy ARP operations. This is something that's on by default on a lot of different pieces of equipment that are out there, Cisco and other vendors alike. What we've got here is just a traditional network, pair of switches with a router in the middle, and our router is obviously routing between two different subnets. Let's say that we have 10, 1, 1, 0, slash 24 on the left and 10 220 slash 24 on the right and for example we'll say that we've got host a host b and if you could have guessed host c and d over here and let's imagine that host b when they were entering the uh, ip address and network mask well as happens to us sometimes it'll auto complete the subnet mask for us. So it sees a 10 and perhaps the operating system assumed a default mask of a slash eight, which is 255.000. What's gonna happen here is if he tries to go from 10.1.1.15 to let's say 10.2.2.15, that he's gonna perform an ARP operation. So uh, effectively he's shouting, remember that ARP has a destination of a broadcast. That's at an ethernet frame perspective. So this is gonna be flooded throughout the VLAN and he's basically shouting saying, where on earth is 10.2.2.15? Well, obviously being in a 10.1.1 subnet, let's say that the router is dot one with a slash 24 mask. Uh, if he hears that, he goes, clearly we have a host that's misconfigured. No one should be ARPing for the 10.10, uh, or in this case, the 10.2.2 subnet from 10.1.1.0. So proxy ARP being enabled on the interface is gonna have the router go ahead and respond back to this and say 10.2.2.15 equals right here. And he'll reply with the MAC address of the router's interface. And the reason for doing that is he knows how to get to 10.2.2. It's located here on this other NIC. So he'll go ahead and he'll perform the routing operation. Assuming that host D has the correct mask of slash 24, he would of course uh, go ahead and send this traffic back to the router, uh, assuming his routing table is correct. So in summary, what's happening here is proxy ARP allows the router to respond on behalf of a misconfigured host. And this typically occurs with something uh, where you see the subnet mask is off, but that's not the only scenario. Let me take you over to something that I saw in the real world at a customer site not real long ago. So if I take a look at the running configuration of this router, and I just include the static routes. As you probably are aware, we can set a static route, which has got, of course, the network statement and the corresponding mask with the next hop IP address. Now, when you configure that, and let's just say the 1110 slash 24 network, notice that we can set the forwarding router's address, we can also set a physical interface. Now there's good reason to put it to a physical interface. For example, a tunnel interface, if we're doing uh, perhaps a, a VPN using GRE tunnels or some other type of tunneling technology, that may be appropriate. But sometimes you'll use a physical interface uh, as we see right here. This is a default route to the internet and we say just go out gig zero zero to get there. Now, what was happening in this particular environment is kind of interesting. You've got the router in this example, it's just a, a Cisco 2911, and it's hooked to, like most routers, a service provider. So here's our ISP, and on the other side, we basically have got Verizon Fios. Phenomenal service provider. Uh, what goes on here with Verizon Fios is effectively, we've got every single IP address on the internet reachable out of gig zero slash zero. And when we look at a routing table, we could either do a default route to the next hop. And of course the next hop would be whoever Verizon tells us it is. You know, if we've got static addressing, 
they'll say, here's your IP address, here's your network mask, here's your next hop IP. And it would be an IP address of a router at Verizon. Now in this case, we didn't set the next hop to an IP address, we just sent it to an interface. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna cause us to create ARP requests out this interface for everything that we ever try to reach. So for example, if I come over here and I try to do something like, uh, let's just say that we wanna ping 8.8.8.8.8. And we wanna ping 4.2.2.2. Notice on some of the addresses, if it's an address we haven't accessed recently, you're going to get that dot there while we're waiting for ARP to work, right? Well, why are we ARPing for 8.8.8.8? Well, again, looking at our routing table, IP route, and let's just look at our default route. This is static, and it's directly connected through gig 00. So all we're doing is ARPing. If I were to do a show IP ARP, on this device, look at this. We're ARPing for every address on the internet. And the answer is exactly the same. This is just the one network. I'm going to hold down my space bar <laughs> so you guys can get the idea. My router is burning memory, holding this in a cache for obviously no reason. Every single route is going to go through the next hop IP address. It's just that simple. I'm not doing BGP. I'm not pulling full tables. I don't have two connections to different service providers, and I'm not making intelligent forwarding decisions. I'm simply ARPing for every single address on the internet. And of course, by doing this, you're just gonna burn loads and loads of memory on your router, and you're gonna make them work a lot harder than he needs to. The way that this was, would normally work is that you're gonna send out ARP requests, you get the answer, I know that my next hop is this MAC address, the MAC address right behind me that keeps going by. And it's still going. Um, you're going to keep doing ARP requests for every single new IP, which is going to cause delay, which is going to cause extra work, which is going to cause a little bit of extra traffic. And as you can see, we're going to uh, just burn through boatloads of router memory doing that. So a more effective way to create a default route would be to put the next hop IP address of the router. We can resolve that MAC address one time, and then we'll go on forever just using that same, that same mapping. Or I say forever, but at least until our cache expires. Um, all right, guys. Well, I hope that was informative. If you've got any more questions, just uh, hit me up with the Ask a Mentor portal, or I'll see you in class. Thanks very much for tuning in. See you later.